with the sexual assault trial tearing apart the Ohio town of Steubenville. Two high school athletes are charged with assaulting a drunk 16-year-old girl last summer. Tonight, for the first time, we see the police interviews with some of the teenagers who watched it unfold, some of them recording it. 17-year-old Taya Parsons from Canada. She was allegedly gang raped by four of her classmates. After an 18-month struggle with the fallout, she killed herself last week. The story of what really led to the firing of a popular CBC radio host, Jan Gomeshi, keeps developing. Today, the a total CBC of nine women have now come forward, two of them publicly, to share their encounters with the former radio host. Gomeshi. This story is generating a lot of discussion across the country about sexual assaults. The Gomeshi allegations are really creating a dialogue that I don't think has been represented in the Canadian national media. The recent case with Gomeshi um, has really given us evidence of the pervasiveness of rape culture in Canada because the instinctive response that so many people had was to interrogate the legitimacy of the victims. You know, our first instinct isn't to believe that the victims are telling the truth, it's to support the perpetrators. And that's different than what we see in other crimes. So the initial response to the Gomeshi case, I think is indicative of rape culture. So many people's instinctive response was to accuse the women of lying or to believe this couldn't actually be what they're saying that it is. And that inclination that we have to distrust victims is you know, just really at the heart of rape culture. Rape culture refers to a system of attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that are supportive of sexual violence. The defining part of rape culture is this idea that to some degree, we believe sexual violence is inevitable. The other part of rape culture is that it really serves to diminish the significance of sexual violence. And that's why it is so problematic, because it trivializes it. Rape culture is evident on university campuses. We see this manifest in any number of ways. St. Mary's gave us an unfortunate example last year with the rape chants that were sung as part of their frosh experience. And in fact, so many people participated in these chants without you know, questioning the fact that they're really endorsing violence against women and the violation of women's right to bodily integrity but it's so normalized to make light of sexual violence that many people fail to even question it. I think that the University of Windsor has been slightly ahead of the curve when it comes to sexual violence prevention. And the focus that we have really chosen to take is the one of bystander intervention. So the bystander initiative is a campus-wide initiative um, where we are trying to actually change the climate on campus for sexual assault. The bystander theories in social psychology suggest that people who don't intervene when they see something happening, it's not because they don't care, it's not because they're callous people, but it's because of a number of obstacles. And that includes, do they actually see the situation as an emergency, as something that they should take action on? Do they personally take responsibility for it? And do they feel they have the skills to intervene? We offer uh, the workshop the Bringing in the Bystander Workshop to students in psychology, introduction to business, criminology, and most recently uh, within the law school as well. With the bystander approach, we don't see people as potential victims or perpetrators. We see everybody as somebody who could potentially intervene and prevent a sexual assault from happening. The workshop helps make that really clear so that people see the violence that is around them more obviously. They see it where they didn't before. And then the second part of that is that we teach them how to intervene. We don't teach a script of exactly what you do in a given situation. We teach a process, a way of approaching problems and thinking through them so that you can generate different solutions for intervening in whatever situation you're in. Our research on campus has shown that, in fact, our three-hour Bringing the Bystander workshop adapted from the University of New Hampshire does actually produce all of these positive effects. It helps students recognize sexual assault. It helps them feel that they could intervene if they saw something and that they do take responsibility for that and that they feel that they have the skills to actually intervene. The other part of the initiative is that we actually train peer facilitators, so other students, to lead these workshops undergraduate academic courses, so a third year course and a fourth year practicum course. Learning about a lot of the different rape myths and how our culture actually perpetuates sexual violence, it was really 
impactful to me personally. And that's really what brought me to actually go through the whole process. Learning throughout the course, I take every part of it into my daily life. You see all the time in TV and the media things that perpetuate rape culture and rape myths and things like that. And it really changes the way you think about things. A lot of TV shows and things like that I can't watch anymore. Even in our everyday lives, just when we go to the bar or something, we, you know, you see these situations that you never really recognize as being problematic to begin with, but after yeah. taking the course, you kind of see the things that actually perpetuate rape culture within our society. Yeah, we're a lot more aware and a lot more reactive, too. The Bystander Initiative benefits the university because it shows parents, students, uh, faculty, staff, that University of Windsor cares about sexual assault, that it is not ignoring it. We've known since the mid-1980s that one in four female university students will experience an attempted or completed rape before she graduates from university. We don't expect changes in actual sexual assault levels for uh, like probably 10 years. You'd have to educate a lot of people on campus over a lot of years to actually shift the whole climate, but that's, that is our goal. We're getting students saying that they know it's a problem on campus, and we're also getting um, more students saying that there is something that, that they could do to change sexual assault on campus. And so that is already, it's, small, it's a small change in the right direction, but it's already starting.